Tell me, Jeff, how will AI change agile collaboration? Uh, in two dimensions. So one dimension is the actual individual developer. Okay. So we know that if developers look use Microsoft Copilot, Copilot can generate 80% of the code. So they have five times fast. But also if you put AI on the team, the whole team gets faster. So if every developer is five times faster, the team will be five times faster, but making AI a part of the team, I believe will make it 25 times faster. And I am supervising a PhD thesis right now that is doing research in this area to show this. Now, how does this work? Let me give you an example. I have two scrum teams I work with every day, uh, two different companies. And uh, this week I'm going into scrum training. So I said to one of my teams, I said, let's do an example of estimating by chat GPT because we use, we use AI in both in all our scrum teams. And so I had them put the last three months of sprint data into chat GPT. I had them create a, chat, a GPT. We put in the scrum book, scrum the art of doing twice the work in half the time, the second edition, which would be coming out and chat estimated the next spread, we already had our estimates manually and chat came up with almost the same answers in one minute and was 40 times, 45 times faster than my team. My team is really fast, okay? So the average scrum team, seven people, if they take an hour to estimate, chat would be 420 times faster than that team and now we're going through to try to prove chat gives as good or better estimates. Okay. So what that says is if you don't have chat on your scrum team, you're going to be non-competitive and you're going to get laid off like 12% of the Microsoft workforce that got laid off in 2023. Okay. So Gen AI will not only make uh, each developer more productive, but it will also change the way we work as a team and will uh, take uh, over parts there. Does that mean we will have to change the structure of the team? Do we, for example, need uh, smaller teams or are we still sticking to the same size of teams? Well, I have always advocated small teams, five or six people, because the data clearly show those are the fastest teams. The Scrum Guide says 10. I've never allowed. I told at Scrum Inc. I said anybody that has a team more than eight people will not get paid. That's going to be the rule. You don't get paid for for slow teams at Scrum Inc. <laughs> so we've never had a 10 person team. <laughs> okay. But the ideal is like five, right? That's that's the sweet spot. So. So rather a small team, but I, if I understand correctly, you say that that's been true for a long time already. Yeah, right. How about, how about if we become that much faster, five times the individual, 25 times the team? Um, do we also have to look at the length of the sprints? I mean, in the Scrum Guide, it says a maximum of four weeks. We all know that many teams are working, for example, with two-week sprints. How do you think it's that going to change or does it uh, affect well, anything the, at all? Well, the, da uh, the data has shown for the last 20 years that shorter sprints are faster. And, and for that reason, we've gone to one week sprints at Scrum Inc. I don't let any of my, uh, my teams do more than one week sprints. So the sprints really need to be one week or less. And in, in certain engagement, like we've done, uh, uh, we went into a, one of the biggest surgery centers here in Boston, and in two weeks, we were able to increase the throughput in the surgery centers by 20%. Uh, this particular surgery center revenue was about uh, $4.5 billion a year. So multiply 20% by $4.5 billion. Uh, and the sprint size was one surgery. Okay. We had a planning. Surgery was typically, you know, two to five hours, then a retrospective. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so one one other thing that might make change with the more powerful AI solutions. Um, we know that generative AI is also helping a lot in uh, writing code, checking code. Do you uh, believe it'll change the configuration of the teams or it will change that perhaps also people from the business side will uh, move into developing code more than before where we had the separation between the developers yeah. and the business side? Is that going to make yeah. a change? Yeah, I recently started coding again as soon as chat Bard could code, uh, but then I was having some problems with my complex code and JetBrains, which is IDE I use, uh, embedded AI, and it looked at the chat code and Bard code and said, this stuff is a bunch of crap. <laughs> and in one hour, we cleaned it all up <laughs> and it worked perfectly. And so now I, uh, I have a startup I'm running now with the healthcare. We have a uh, nursing, a bunch of nurses, a clinical team, and they've watched me write tools for them to use in the practice uh, using the JetBrains IDE. And there, as and one of the smart nurses, who's a PhD, says, "I can do that. You need to show me how how I can code tools for the for the company using JetBrains." She says, "I don't know anything about programming, but I know requirements, and, mm -hmm. and basically that's what you're doing." She's probably better at me at kind of specifying what is needed. So you're going to have the smarter people are going to be coding because you don't have to be uh, a programmer, basically. Okay. Uh, so, so we don't need that much expertise in programming anymore. So the people who are really in need of the programs, they can do larger parts for yeah. themselves. They can go into the programming, yeah. developing the programs, and they don't need yeah. the extra uh, way through the developer. Yeah, it, it turns out that the people who are good at the specifications, you know, in AI, the people that can ask the right questions are the most successful, right? So good developers were always good at specifications, but a lot of developers are not that good at it, right? So now the value of a developer now is going to be more how well can they specify mm -hmm. what needs to be created because the AI is going to do all the punctuation <laughs> okay. of the code and also figure out, like I'm programming in multiple languages uh, and moving things between one language and another. I'm mainly, mainly it's Python, Ruby, and PHP, but it will code in any language. And the differences between languages are really important. And as a developer, you need a lot of experience to to do that, years of experience. But with but with the AI now, particularly the ones embedded in the IDEs, they take care of all that detail. Okay. And uh, and and particularly the JetBrains IDE is much better than ChatGPT or Bard or Gemini now uh, in sorting that out because it has the context of the code right embedded in the IDE. So, so we are like on a more direct way to create value, right? Right. Okay. Um, in your background, I can see the book Scaling Done Right. So yes. how, how <laughs> will AI change the way we scale Agile? Does it change the way the teams will collaborate, work together? What's the major changes we'll be seeing there? Well, in, in, in this... Uh, about six months ago, we started working on updating the book, Scrum, The Art of Doing Twice the Work and Half the Time. We spent 10 years. The first thing we did was to go into chat and say, what's changed with Scrum in the last 10 years? And it came up with a list of about 12 things. And then we said, okay, what? how does Scrum need to evolve to meet these new challenges? And it came up with 10 areas. One of them obviously is scaling, remote work, things like that. And then we said, okay, here's Scrum at scale as it is now. And Chad said, Scrum at scale already has 90% or more of what needs to be done. 
here's some minor tuning at the edges of scrum at scale you need to do to get it to what it calls version 2.0 of scrum mm -hmm. so that was that was really interesting because <laughs> In dialoguing with the AI, it's often hard to get them to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it 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 went to Scrum at scale without me even really prompting it. It says, you know, these are the areas that need to change, and Scrum at scale is already most of the way there. So here's what you need to do to fine tune Scrum at scale. But I got that right. You. Did you use uh, uh, ChatGPT to get some ideas about how to evolve Absolutely. Scrum itself? And there were some. some uh, real... And again, let me uh, let me just uh, qualify that ChatGPT 3.5 for my purposes was useful, useless. When ChatGPT 4 came out, it was like ten times better. Then I could actually start using it. And it is now continually evolved, so it's 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 getting better and better. When when we started, it was like an eleven year old developer, you know, mm -hmm. or it's like a, a eleven year old kid with the internet in its head, right? <laughs> it would make stuff up, it would lie, it would. Uh, but now it's more like um, a late teenage developer, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So it it's pretty smart and it's pretty accurate. Still makes some mistakes. But the way to work with an AI is really in collaboration. And that's what I'm trying to teach Scrum teams right now. You don't just ask it a question and answer. You ask it a question and then you point out, oh, it's missing this, what about that? And that starts a discussion. That discussion actually changes the, weight, changes the weights of the neural nets in the mm -hmm. AI, just like it does in your brain, right? And it's through that dialogue that both you and the AI start to zero in on what's really important. So uh, you, you need to sit down and talk with that AI for an hour to get the answer to any question that is going to be reasonable. And so uh, I'm writing a new book called First Principles in Scrum, and it's all done in dialogue with the AI. But <laughs> Uh, the chapter I'm working on right now is a really difficult one. We've spent weeks arguing about this, arguing about that. Whenever I get feedback on the internet, as soon as somebody gives feedback, okay, this stuff, this chapter is not very good. There's no outline. It's not clear. I put that into the chat, and then it will respond. Well, mm -hmm. you know, person is right. Here's how we can fix that. How about if we change the outline to this, structure it like that? And so I've had probably four weeks of dialogue with the AI with continuous updates every day, trying to get one chapter of that book <laughs> but, in a good place. <laughs> so, so the the way you're working with uh, artificial intelligence is very much the same like you're working with humans. And so what made Absolutely. Agile successful to, to really encounter the human traits, that's the same what you're doing with uh, working with artificial intelligence here, right? Absolutely. And I, I think that's a really important point because uh, what I find in the Scrum training, we're trying to train the Scrum masters to use AI as a member of the team. People don't understand that it's a collaboration. You treat it like another team member. If the AI is not very good, it's a really junior developer, and you treat it like a junior developer. If the AI is really good, then you treat it at the level of seniority that it warrants on, on the team, right? So, so once again, it's, it's like the same skills you need uh, working with real humans, understanding where their capabilities and their strong points are, and then talk with them, interact with them, and develop things exactly. and become better together. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So okay, the, the AI, I mean, it's just like a person. Sometimes it doesn't want to answer your questions. Have you noticed that? <laughs> it <laughs> yes. just says, well, I'm just an AI. I can't. And so then you have to come back around and say, look, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> here's some more information. You should be able to answer this. And all of a sudden, 
Well, we could we could look at it this way, and it starts answering. You you have to talk to it like a person to get it to give you the answers that you want. It doesn't just give you automatically. So, so meaning that the all those practices and all those methods that have been useful, uh, they are not not only useful uh, uh, today, and the same way they are even more useful and they should be even, yeah. uh, even more in the set of every person who's running a team, right? Or who's... Yeah, I think it's even more important, at least at the state the AI is in right now, it's even more important to have good collaboration skills and good communication skills because the AI can go off the rails very easily. Okay, so that almost brings us to to the to a good closing of our little dis discussion here. The success factors that made you successful in working in agile teams with humans, they are now not only as important, they are perhaps even more important if you want to work together with a new colleague who might be ChatGPT or some other AI tool. Uh, that's absolutely true, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's something. You know, in Zurich, you're in Zurich. I, when I was in Zurich about 10 years ago, a senior research guy from the IBM Research Lab in Zurich came by and he said, uh, Jeff, we're training the supercomputer to do Scrum. And I said, how can the computer do Scrum? You know, you need to dynamically change things in real time. You're probably going to need different chips. He says, you're right. We're building a new chip that can dynamically change backlog in real time. And I said, how do you know it will work? He says, if it works with people, it will work for the computer. Okay. And so now computer became even more human and the old and all the success <laughs> factors of agile become even more important in the collaboration with computers and yeah. humans at, in teams. Yeah. Yeah, I think the big problem in the agile community today is that the agile community is going to have to get a lot faster. If if we think we were agile yesterday, by 2030, we are going to have to be a hundred times faster. That's what that's what analysts are predicting. Because of AI, we need we're going to be a hundred times faster. The only people going to be a hundred times faster is people that know how to get the AI on the team working with them. And the team is really important. If you remember when the computer won the chess champion for the world, all the chess masters were depressed. But then a year later a team of people with laptops, with AI on the laptop, won the world chess champion. And then in the last year or so, the same thing happened with Go, which is a more complicated <laughs> game. The computer won Go and everybody thought, oh, it's over, the computers have taken over. A year later, a team of humans with AI in their laptops became the world champion Go master. So. Agile teams need to think like the teams that became the world champion chess master. That, that's where the agile teams need to go. They're going to have to act. They're going to be a team still, but they're going to have AI in the laptop. Okay. So that's a nice closing, Jeff. I believe we have to build teams now together with uh, AI colleagues who are our team members, and we actually still have to use the old uh, methods and practices that made us successful with agile teams with humans. And now we have to do it over again with machines on our teams. Great point. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff thank you very much for sharing your ideas and your knowledge. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me.